Hello everyone. In this short video, we're going to discuss Incredibuild's Build Monitor and the benefits it can give you when you want to analyze your build. The first thing you'll notice about the Build Monitor is that it provides you with a very clear visualization of your build progress. I'm going to use a Build Monitor of Chrome here for this video, and you can see that it has many different bars and different colors. Each one of those is representing a single task that was executed during the build. I can zoom in and zoom out using these two buttons here or using the scroll bar on my mouse. I'm going to zoom in a little bit now and you can see that the bars are becoming wider, the caption is becoming more clear, and I can hover above the bar and see exactly what is the task that was being executed. For example, for this compilation task here, a bash script here, I can see it took around 22 seconds to complete. There you have a link task that took 3 seconds, and I can scroll to the left and to the right to reveal different sections in my build according to the timeline here at the bottom. This can be very useful if I want to identify tasks which are taking too long, maybe files that are taking too long to compile. This one here took 2 seconds, this one here took 3 seconds, but some files can take longer. Also, if I want to identify bottlenecks, for example, let me zoom out a little bit and scroll to the left. Here I have a section of approximately three minutes of link tasks. This can be normal for this project, but in other cases it can point to many unnecessary dependencies between projects that are blocking my build and causing poor distributions because projects are waiting to be linked. So maybe it can point to unnecessary dependencies and something that I can improve, maybe change the solution structure and then improve my overall build performance and distribution. I can also scroll down and see all of the machines that participated in the build and which task was executed on which machine and when. For example here, a compilation task that took 15 plus 9 24 seconds to complete. Maybe I can do something to improve that. You can see that the bars have different colors. Let me review this, zoom in a little bit again. The cyan color means that this task can be executed only on the initiator machine. The first machine and the list of machines here is the initiator, all of the machines below are the helpers. So cyan would be a task that can be executed only on the initiator. A green bar means the task has finished successfully with no error and no warning. A red bar, which we don't have in this monitor, would mean a task that failed with an error. So let's review the tabs that we have on the left section of the build monitor. The first one, the one that we already saw, is the build monitor progress tab. It shows all of the bars and the times that each one of them took. The next tab is the output. This is the output for the entire solution. I can see and review all of the output that was written to STD out during the build. The next tab is the Projects tab. I can see all of the projects that are part of my solution, and for each one the status that it finished with. Green for success, yellow for warning, and red would be for an error. I can click a project and see the output which is relevant only to this project and this way I can analyze errors and warnings in specific projects. The next tab is the Build Summary. I can see the status of the build, how many files were built, how many errors and warnings, how much time the build took. The next one is the Messages tab, which is currently grayed out because there are no system messages that IncrediBuild produced during this build. The Did You Know is like tips and tricks and you can navigate between them and maybe learn something new. And the last one is for saving this monitor file, saving the log file for reviewing it later. Another thing that I want to show you with the build monitor, and it can be very useful when you come to analyze your build, is the system graphs. This can be enabled with View and View System Graphs over here. And now I can select the system graph that I want to show using the right click on the graphs area and select system graphs or again from the view menu, select system graphs. 
I have many stats and KPIs here that can be used to analyze my build. For example, the CPU usage, the actual kernel time, memory usage, measurements, distributions, bandwidth measurements. So let me just enable now the ready tasks for this matter. And we can see that it already added it to the graphs area, and I can click any part of this graph to see how many ready tasks I had at each point in my build. For example here, I have many bash tasks that in a way blocked my distribution. Because I see that I have only 30 tasks ready. And these scripts are running in a serial manner and when they finished I suddenly have a boost in the ready tasks. Here I have more than a thousand. The active tasks I see here are only a hundred and something because this is the total number of CPUs that I have in my pool here, in my grid. So the system graphs can be also a very useful tool to analyze my build, to analyze the behavior and to identify bottlenecks and other things that are maybe blocking my distribution with this build. So to sum things up, the Build Monitor is a very useful and powerful tool that can provide you with a clear visualization of the build. It gives you a way to easily navigate between errors, warnings, and identify bottlenecks, discover maybe potential bottlenecks and unnecessary dependencies, and can also give you a lot of ways to measure the performance of your build using the system graphs. I hope you enjoyed this short presentation, and if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to contact us at support for Incredibuild. Thanks, and goodbye.